Thank you for joining us today in Jennifer Schaus and Associates complimentary webinar series. We're coming to you live from Washington, DC. This year on Fridays, we're covering procurement playbooks. We take a deep dive into doing business with the federal agencies and departments with our panelists. On Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, we covered the FAR supplements or procurement regulations for the agencies and departments. Fridays, we cover the business development and marketing aspects of the same agency and departments. The full schedule, sign-up links, and recordings are on our website. And as you can see here, here's just a look at our Wednesday schedule. Um, we've already covered several of the FAR supplements, and we'll be winding down the series with the Veterans Administration. And here's just a look at our corresponding Friday um, schedule. Again, the full schedule and past recordings are on our website under the Playbook tab. Please note, this fall we will be starting a new webinar series covering subcontracting opportunities in the different government departments. These webinars will be on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, and they begin September 7th with the Department of Agriculture. You can find the registration links and full schedule on our website under the subcontracting tab, and we also have sponsorship opportunities available. Now we would like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors who helped make this webinar series possible. First, we'd like to thank the Virginia PTAC. Virginia PTAC is based out of GMU in Fairfax and offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore what PTACs can offer. And a special thanks to the Federal Business Council. The FBC creates and manages virtual and in-person meetings and events to connect government and industry thought leaders, product providers, and solutions with government programs that use them. The FBC works with a variety of federal agencies to connect government and industry in the form of in-person and virtual conferences, training events, policy dialogue, and outreach. Over the last 40 plus years, FBC has become a comprehensive resource for connecting industry and the federal government. Next, we'd like to thank Dastin. Dastin is an IT and cloud solutions provider working with corporations, the military and government agencies to lower their costs, increase scalability, improve operational efficiency, and meet compliance regulations using targeted cloud-based solutions. Dastin is a certified partner of Oracle NetSuite, a premier tiered Google Cloud partner, and certified partner of Cisco, Virtue, AODocs, and Authenticate. For more information about Dastin services or to schedule a complimentary consultation, please email Joe Alston or visit the Dastin website. Next, we'd like to thank C3. C3 ISIT develops tailor-made technology solutions that increase efficiency, bolster productivity, and improve business processes. C3 is the leading provider of managed IT services, <coughs> excuse me, as well as compliant cybersecurity solutions for federal contractors. C3 works with defense contractors to achieve and maintain CMMC 2.0, <clears throat> ZFARS and NIST 800-171. Contact C3 to learn more about the CMMC 2.0 readiness program. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next, we'd like to thank RLJ Financial Consultants. Founded in 2008, RLJ Financial Consultants is a customer-focused quality-driven minority and locally provider of commercial insurance brokerage services. <coughs> their services are designed to maximize your return on investment and managing the risk to your business. Call Roderick today at 202-832-1417 for a free consultation and insurance quote. Lastly, we'd like to thank the PubK Group. The PubK Group publishes news insights for government contractors, agencies, and councils. Every day, PubK delivers news on bid protests, contract disputes, new laws and regulations, cybersecurity requirements, 
false claims act activity and developments in mergers and acquisitions in the GovCon community. In daily news briefs and in-depth conversations, <coughs> ooh, sorry, <laughs> in podcasts and webinars, CubK leverages its deep bench of government contract experts to keep you up to date on fast changing government rules and expectations. And every January, PubK presents its week-long annual review, featuring more than 50 GovCon experts across a dozen panels, recapping the year's top developments, participation, and CLEs are free to subscribers. Visit PubK online at www.pubkgroup.com. All right, and today we're covering doing business with the Department of Justice, DOJ. So let's meet our panelist. Our panelist today is, as always, Ms. Archisha Meehan from GovSpend. It's great to have you with us, as always. Thank you so much. Um, always glad to be here and be part of this uh, um, playbook series, which I think is coming to an end next month. And then I know you guys are starting with the next one. So. Um, Good, af good afternoon, everyone. For those who don't know me, my name is Amarchi Shamian, and I am the director of the federal go-to-market at GovSpend. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So truly, um, you know, I come from, um, you know, the FedMind. FedMind's mission is truly to bring accurate information and unmatched transparency and accountability to the world of federal government contracting. FedMind itself was founded way back in 2004 to help our small businesses with the federal intelligence that is needed to make the right decisions and help them with their planning and strategic, uh, you know, the, the whole strategic process. We were acquired last year uh, in uh, by GovSpend, which is the largest provider of uh, information on the state, local, and education market side. So today, GovSpend does provide uh, one of the best informations uh, on the entire public sector, both federal and state and local. So next slide. What we really do is integrate all the various data sets, um, the federal data sets that are out there into one easy to use platform, just to give you an idea of the various set types of data that is available within FedMind. Um, so, you know, just quick look there. Uh, next, um, next slide. So, you know, Whenever I think about an agency, I think it is super important for us to understand what is that agency doing? What is the mission of that agency? To get a very good understanding of who they are and what is their plan for the future, because all of that sort of gets reflected in the way you see their past spend and what the future spend is going to be. So for the Department of Justice, uh, their mission is pretty simple in that it is to uphold the rule of law and to keep our country safe and protect civil rights. Uh, I did not know, but the Judiciary Act of 1789 actually established the Office of the Attorney General. And in 1870, uh, Congress, Congress passed the act that established the Department of Justice to create an executive department of the government with the attorney general as the head. This is something I did not know. So as I was researching the Department of Justice is when I saw this, which I was like, huh, that is interesting. Um, in terms of looking at their values, again, independence and impartiality, honesty and integrity, respect and excellence. Everything that you would expect to see is very much part of their values. Uh, let's go to the next slide. They've also gone ahead, and this is available on DOJ's website, and I would highly recommend that you know you have a look at it. Um, you know, if if you look at what their strategic plan is, then the strategic goals again ties in with the mission of the agency: uphold the rule of law, keep our country safe, protect civil rights, ensure economic opportunity and fairness for all and administer just court and correctional systems. So pretty much in line with everything that we would expect to see. Um, 
Let's go to the next slide. This slide, and I hope everyone can see it, sort of just tells you uh, was a nice way of um, uh, of their uh, organization chart that I found on the website, and um, it's it's I think the most recent one as you can see, uh, but it sort of tells us exactly what are the various divisions that fall under the Department of Justice, including um, you know the FBI and the DEA and um, you know. Um, uh, ATF, all of these agencies, bureaus fall under the Department of Justice. So let's go to the next slide. Um, looking at their overall spend, you know, we uh, pre-COVID, it's the spend at DOJ has been about, uh, you know, a little less than eight and a half million average, um, did go up in F by 20 and 21. Um, as of uh, earlier this week, DOJ spend was at about 5.5 million. Won't be surprised if it uh, ends a little bit higher than what we've seen in FY21. Uh, but this, you also can see the various bureaus and the spend by the bureaus based on contracting office. So again, um, you know, the federal prison system, FBI, are your top bureaus almost like year over year. Um, uh, and again, no surprises there. Let's get to the next slide. So in FY21, uh, you know, the $9.6 billion spend went to about 8,700 companies with, uh, you know, GEO Group, Core Civic, uh, a nice mix of companies, McKesson, CGI Federal, all being part of the, part, uh, the top 10 companies. Um, next slide. And it, in terms of the various NAICS codes and PSC codes, again, computer-related services, facility support services, uh, security guards, um, all a part of what you know the DOJ spends on. And if you think about their mission and the various uh, bureaus that come under DOJ, this absolutely makes uh, sense on where you know um, the, the NAICS codes definitely help. You know, you can overlay them over the mission and that's what you get. Um, again, if you start looking at the PSC codes, you get a little more details uh, in terms of what are your top product or services that are being uh, procured. Um, and I always believe that it's helpful to, you know, while this is the more generic search, just looking at the top level, um, it's really helpful to put in your keywords and understand how are the NAICS codes and the PSC codes changing? Do you have those NAICS and PSC codes as, uh, you know, in, in your SAM uh, profile? Uh, so if the agency is searching for companies uh, based on NAICS codes, you're very much there. Um, those are things that we really want to make sure we pay attention as we are doing our market research and trying to understand how an agency is purchasing. So let's go to the next slide. Um, also look at you know the how's that agency what's the place of performance in this case it's a lot of you know dc virginia as your top agencies which i'm sure has to do a lot with the it work that the agency spends but then you also have contracts being awarded where the place of performance is you know texas and california and west virginia so uh, keeping in mind that you know the federal bureau of prisons and related entities all fall under DOJ. Uh, keep looking at the place of performance, depending on the type of work you do, might be a very good idea to, to make sure we you know pay attention to. Um, in terms of contracts going to small business, uh, almost a little more than 30% were awarded as small business contracts. And again, just to make sure we all understand when we say small business, it's really that contracting officer's determination if that contract is a small business or not based on the NAICS codes. So let's go to the next slide. In terms of contracts that were awarded as small business in FY21, little less than $3 billion were awarded to about 5,000 companies. Uh, mix of, you, you do see a joint venture in here. Um, you know, also Heritage Health Solutions, Veteran Rain Solutions, some technology firms, uh, you know, so 
this is just telling you the, the contracts that were awarded as small business contracts. Um, next slide. Um, so when I look at small business contracts and we further look at the NAICS and the PSC codes, they are going to change because of course, you know, uh, you, we, we're looking now just at a smaller group of contracts. Again, make sure you do your, put in your keywords and understand better what are the NAICS and PSC codes that the agency is purchasing those services from. Uh, so let's now go to the next slide. Um, I think when we are looking at small business type, uh, you know, contracts, uh, it gets to be even more important to understand what are the set asides that are being used. Uh, how is that agency buying? And again, putting in your keywords definitely gives you a much much better idea. Uh, if you are an 8A company looking at the 8A sole source contracts and maybe understanding, you know, uh, are there possible teaming opportunities for you there? Uh, but you could see that the DOJ definitely is uh, is doing a good job in uh, the set asides. They also have a nice amount being awarded as woman-owned small business, um, hub zone set asides, STV OSB set asides. So it's a nice mix of um, uh, set asides that the agency is using. Um, I did this place of performance because now you could see some changes from a uh, place of performance as compared to when we did the full um, full C you know when we did the entire agency so it's always interesting to see how the place of performance also changes when you change any when you add on a filter whether it's you know small business or a socioeconomic status or even just a keyword or an X code things will change and it's always, um, and, and all of that information will tell you exactly what is it, how is that agency procuring, where is it that you need to focus your efforts on. So let's go to the next slide. Um, in terms of contracts that were awarded under the COVID spend, um, you could see that in FY20, the agency spent more than $107 million under, uh, $133 million under the COVID National Interest Action Code, which actually increased in FY21 to $166 million. Uh, with the federal prison systems um, accounting for the bulk of the contract, especially in FY21. Um, in FY20, the COVID NIA contracts were awarded to a little less than 400 companies, mainly in medical services related codes and 54% of these contracts were awarded as small business. Things have changed in 2021 because obviously the, the needs change. Uh, contracts were awarded to only 134 companies with NAICS uh, that are now included, include facility support services as also uh, the pharmaceutical code. And only 8% of the contracts were awarded as small business. So always nice to get into the level of details of you know understanding how has that agency changed its procurement uh, or how is it procuring uh, with under the pandemic related NAICS codes and um, you know national interest action codes so next next slide um, you know I I always focus and I always point out the PSC codes. And the reason for that is that, you know, GSA has um, created categories based on PSC codes. I think it's very important for all of us to pay attention and understand how, you know, how is that agency purchasing based on GSA's categories? Uh, and then further go in and get a better understanding of how is that agency procuring contracts as small business and other than small business under those categories. So, um, you know, looking at the top categories at DOJ, no surprises, we've seen it almost across all agencies, um, professional services and IT very much there, uh, followed by medical and facilities and construction. And then, of course, you will see security and protection here, given the fact that, you know, the federal prison systems and uh, so many uh, security-related 
services fall under DOJ. Uh, and pay attention to the contracts that are being awarded as small business and other than small business also. Um, let's go to the next slide because typically categories always will tie in with the GVACs and strategic sourcing. Um, NASA Sub 5, very much your top uh, vehicle that is used, followed by Alliant and CIO SV3. So a lot of um, IT related, computer related services being procured on the various GVACs. Um, so let's go to the next slide. Um, also wanted to show you a little bit of the subcontract information that's available for Department of Justice. This is coming from um, the data we integrate from USC spending, which gets its information from FSRS. Um, we have a little uh, more than 235 million that was reported as subcontract awards to 238 companies by 40 prime contractors. In terms of your NAICS codes, of course, computer-related NAICS codes are very much part of the mix. However, um, legal services is your top NAICS code at about $78 million. So let's go into the next um, slide. Uh, looking at your top subcontractors, uh, you have Dell, Compass Strategy, Center Law and Consulting, Advanced Employee Intelligence as your top sub-awardees. But if I'm looking at your prime contractors, we have SAIC, Mantec, Lidos, Accentures, all the big companies that are actually working with a lot of the smaller companies. So that's always nice to see. Our next slide. So that brings us to opportunities. Um, you know, I, I think over the years, and you all know this better than me, um, opportunities really could be new opportunities that are based on the new initiatives. It's really dependent on how that agency, the funding that's available and the need of that agency. Um, and then of course, you have to pay attention on the contracts that are expiring that could possibly be recompleted. So it's always gonna be a mix um, of, uh, you know, when we look at uh, the opportunities. Now, where do you get that information? Looking at budget and program information is very important. Um, our agencies do a phenomenal job of providing very detailed budget and program information. Um, so make sure if DOJ is or any agency is your focus, pay attention and have a look at those um, you know, data sets. Um, look at the pre-solicitations and source of sort notices that are released in SAM.gov uh, at that agency level, because really this is the agency's way of doing the market research. And then, of course, looking at expiring contract searches. You know, if you are on, uh, if you know that the agency is procuring contracts on 8A stars too, and you know that uh, you know, maybe we look at contracts that are expiring on 8A stars too at that agency based on the type of work you do. So, and especially if you are on 8A stars three, uh, you know, that would make a good transition. If you are an 8A company that's relatively new, look at contracts that are expiring based on, um, you know, the incumbents 8A expiring. So many ways of doing searches that will help you um, you know, um, get more detailed and granular and then decide if you want to add that possible opportunity to your pipeline. Um, next slide. So the other thing that, and I was actually just talking with someone, um, if you are in the technology world or IT related world, paying attention to your Exhibit 53s and 300s is very important. This is where the agencies do put together and make public the IT spend that is there for a specific program or an investment. Um, there is a lot of detail that is provided, and I think it's important for us to pay attention to that invest, you know, the detail and the amount that is budgeted. You know, what are the trends? Uh, you know, is the budget, is, is that specific investment coming to the end? You know, I've, we've seen instances where uh, the spend might be a multi-million dollar 
spend, but now it's coming down to less than $10 million. Tells you many things that maybe that, that investment or that program and initiative is maybe now coming into its maintenance phase. Uh, so do pay attention to your Exhibit 5300s. Um, let's go to the next slide. And part of your Exhibit uh, 53s is Exhibit 300s, um, where you get a lot more information on how that specific program is doing within that initi uh, IT initiative. Um, again, paying attention to the funding. Um, and when you get into the details of the Exhibit 300s, you actually uh, get the CIO's rating for that program. You see who that program manager is, and you see a lot more detail about what that program is for. And that sort of gives you that transparency and visibility. Um, in our case, we've actually linked the contracts to the Exhibit 53s and 300s wherever possible. So you could see who the incumbent is and you know see how they are performing. Um, so the next slide. And then, and, and you know, really part of all of this is to make sure that when you're having conversations with the agencies, you are coming from an educated perspective, you have done your market research, you know the possible um, uh, contracting offices, bureaus, programs that you want to focus on. And all of that just sort of has us uh, be part of a more productive conversation when we are talking with the agency. Uh, looking at some of your expiring contracts that were awarded as other than small business, uh, uh, you know, um, we have a little less than $6 billion that were awarded that are expiring in the next 12 months. Uh, here's a quick look at the top 10 contracts that are expiring. Uh, Mindburn Technology, Geo Group, Verizon, Federal, all contracts that are expiring. Uh, next slide. And then have a look at your top uh, uh, place of performance and next code. Uh, again, little different than what we saw when we were looking at the top next code uh, with security guards, computer design services, all part of the next codes that are expiring. Uh, next slide. And let's go in and see what's happening in terms of the expiring contracts for small businesses. Um, again, um, less than $3 billion in contracts that are expiring in the next 12 months. Uh, and you can see it seems like a good mix of contracts that are expiring. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, where you see a lot of uh, computer related, health insurance related uh, NAICS codes that are expiring, as also construction and investigation services. Um, pay attention to the set aside. If you are an 8A, pay attention to the 8A sole sources um, and see if any of the incumbents 8As are also expiring because that could be an opportunity for you to create those uh, relationships, steaming relationships also. Um, next slide. And then this is a quick look at, you know, what are your top opportunities that are, uh, that are open at this moment uh, within uh, DOJ. And I just did a search for free solicitations and sources sort to, you know, just if I would, I would always tell you that save these searches, save them separately. A lot of them do not have uh, set aside statuses or you know that, that decisions not yet made. This is the market research phase for agencies. Do make sure that you respond to them if you are doing that type of work. Um, next slide. And then um, you know the DOJ's budget is uh, very much out there on their website. Um, there is quick looks that, you know, when I had a quick look at it, a couple of things that I found interesting were that there are increase in investments and grants for the state and law enforcement partners. So while we are not talking about grants, I would tell you that it is always a good idea to look at the grants also and see if there is a possible opportunity for you to do that. Um, I was surprised, not surprised, but it was interesting to see <clears throat> more than a hundred million $100 million 
is in new funding for the body worn camera uh, program for FBI, DEA, Marshal Services, and ATF. Um, it was also nice to see uh, almost a little more than $6 million that's there for new funding for environmental justice and uh, to combat the climate crisis, which is very much happening right now. <laughs> uh, with that, I think I am at the end of my presentation. Uh, feel free to reach out to me, either email me or reach out to me in, via LinkedIn. And if you have any questions, always happy to help. Thank you. Thank you so much, Archisha. Um, now we're just gonna take a quick inside perspective from the government. Um, unfortunately, um, a representative from DOJ was not available to speak with us today, um, but we'd like to go through just a quick, uh, a few quick links for you. You can also find these on our website um, under the doing business with tabs. So um, here's just a link to the main agency um, department website and then to um, the small business office as well. And a link to the acquisition forecast. Um, we, we really recommend that you take a look at that as well as the SBA scorecard. So again, you can find those um, on our website. Um, yeah, so we just want to say another thank you to Ms. Archisa Meehan for being with us today. Um, as she said, her contact information is there on the screen. Should you have any questions for her, um, or you can reach out via LinkedIn. And we hope to see you next week. Um, we'll be digging into the Office of Personnel Management. So the FAR supplement will be on Wednesday at 12 p.m. and the corresponding playbook on Friday. Um, the recording from today's webinar will be found on our YouTube and our website um, in a little less than 24 hours. So thank you for attending today. This concludes the webinar. Have a great rest of your day.